It's that time of year again where we're seeing a lot of your bigger creators in the home lab space do tours of their network. And one of the things that I've noticed is that they are doing a better job of reducing their footprint and kind of sizing down, but they're still kind of showing you the Lamborghini of home labs. And that can be rather intimidating because not only does it cost a tremendous amount, I mean, these people are spending tens of thousands of dollars on their equipment, but it's also rather inefficient when it comes to energy. And me personally, I'm a weirdo. I'm one of these folks that still loves the touch of grass. And I'm highly concerned about what's going on out there in the environment. And I can tell you, it's not good. We are 100% killing this planet. And make no exceptions about this, that if you are getting into home labbing and running like a server or anything like that, you probably are contributing to that carbon footprint unless you are doing it in a more conservative and, in my opinion, responsible way. Now, most of these big creators, for whatever reason, they love to give you a flex. They've got places that look like art studios. And like I said, I think I saw one creator recently that probably had a $100,000 build out and probably pays over $1,000 a month. And unless he has like 400 kids, I don't know what they're building. These folks are building just small enterprises that you would find more so in like a small to medium sized business than you would in any home. And for me, I think as a creator, uh, it's my responsibility to at least float this idea out there that we need to be, as home labbers, more concerned with our footprint. We know about power. We know what we're basically using to power our hobby. So we should at least be aware that if we're going to do this, we should do it in the most efficient way possible. You see, we have an obligation to leave some power for some of those other younger Padawans that are not yet here and hopefully we'll pick up this hobby and continue it on to the next level. So with that, today I'm gonna to show you a setup that I have that is not only budget friendly, but also very efficient when it comes to the power usage. Okay, many of you guys know I love my diagrams, so you may not get that sweet hardware porn, if you will, uh, but I will just link a lot of these things down below. They are affiliate links. If you're interested, it helps the channel out. doesn't cost you a thing. But let's walk through this. I am going to go a little bit on a tangent because I do want to talk about how I have it all set up with VLANs and stuff just as a refresher. But really, I want you to focus on, you know, the amount of money I put into this as well as some of the things I did down here to save a lot of energy. So first and foremost, I have a modem coming in. That's something for my ISP that I can't change. So it is what it is. That thing goes over to my router. Now, big news here for 2025, I actually changed my router. I'm a big fan of PFN Sense. I built out my, my own router. I think if you're starting out, there is a lot of lessons there to be learned. It will be painful. You'll have to learn a lot. You're gonna be in a very archaic OS but it does what it needs to do and it's a great way to learn. It's gonna give you that exposure. You're gonna learn about uh, routing. Uh, you're gonna be forced to learn about firewall rules and things like that and they don't really make it that intuitive or easy to do, but I still highly suggest if you're starting out to consider that. Now, one of the issues I have in my network was the fact that I have a lot of unified devices. So I have a unified managed switch, I have a unified access point. I'll probably get more unified access points and I really do like their software. And I was having trouble with my managed switch getting kicked offline. If you haven't sense as this part started to grow over here on the IoT, uh, you know, and over here on the PyLAN, which is basically all of my self-hosted applications, it was wanting to assign like my containers IP addresses instead of understanding that these are just containers that are on the same IP address on different ports. Uh, so it was kicking my, my switch offline. It just really wasn't that great of experience. So what I did was I upgraded to a Unify router and that was the main big thing I did in 2025 and I'm glad I did it because the UI is just simpler, more intuitive and it just works better. I, I haven't had any problems with these things getting booted offline for no apparent reason. Now I ended up going with a cheaper version. I went with the Cloud Ultra from Unify now that is $129, but you're going to get the same software that the Dream Machine has on it to the most part. And you're going to get most of the features. You're going to miss some of these extra bells and whistles. But in terms of a utilitarian, just workhorse, I think the Ultra is the way to go. It does not have Wi-Fi on it, so you'll have to buy some access points, but I already had those. So it made a lot of sense to me. So $129, pretty good. It doesn't draw that much power. I really do like it. It's got four different ports. One is a WAM port, that's 2.5, and the other are gigs. 
uh, but that doesn't really matter to me because I'm not really looking to upgrade. That's a huge cost going to 2.5 or 10. I'd have to upgrade all the NIC cards. Uh, it would go on and on and on. So I'm just not there yet. And to be honest with you, it all really comes down to with speed. Can I wait a little bit of time to save thousands of dollars? The answer for me, someone who lives paycheck to paycheck, remember I'm an average Joe, not one of these big creators that's gonna show you a Lamborghini. Listen, that that's okay. I will take that trade off. So here I have it connected to an access point. These are actually arrows. Now I know that's icky. I know that's weird to say, but I have it isolated. So I don't think Amazon's getting a whole lot of information other than maybe some of my sensors on IoT. Uh, but again, I talk about repurposing devices. There's no reason to throw these ways. I had these before I got into home labbing and I'm still using them today just to serve my IoT and guest Wi-Fi network and it's isolated in its own VLAN. So, you know, if you were going to pick this up, be like $100. This router was $129. So, you know, you're looking at, you know, $129, $229 plus the managed switch. Now, the managed switch, that is a bit more expensive. It was like $250. And that has 16 ports. And some of them are PoE ports. So, it's a 16-port PoE Unify switch. Again, it will all be linked down below. And that switch was probably the most expensive piece. Probably draws a lot of energy because it's PoE. Uh, but I needed it and, you know, I think it's really, really slick and, and personally how it all works together is awesome. Spawning off that, I have another access point. This is a U6 from Unify, U6 Pro, and this Wi-Fi is simply for my default LAN. And my default LAN has like my PC, my phones, my laptops, my NASs, um, it, you know, if I need any Wi-Fi. It's strictly dedicated to this. It can't get over to the IoT network. The IoT network can't get over to it. So it's just like my secure Wi-Fi for all my mission critical stuff. Now, speaking of these VLANs, I have trusted and untrusted. This is kind of a new way I'm doing it because I got this new firewall and they have a new update in terms of how you write those security and firewall rules. It's really intuitive. I can't believe how easy it is. I don't know why I didn't go over sooner just for that part, uh, but I will demo that. So if you are interested, please pay attention to the channel, subscribe, hit that bell button for notifications. I'm going to do a whole thing on why I switched over from my N100 PFN Sense custom router over to this, and I'll also be demoing some of the software that comes with it from Unify. So with that said, let's talk a little bit more about these uh, default VLANs. So default VLAN is the, the main one. It's got my PC, my laptop, and my NASes in it. Uh, I only serve one application here, and that is AI. And the only reason that is, is because remember I talked about you know, repurposing devices, but also kind of, you know, using a device for multiple things. Well, my gaming PC, I recently put in a 3060 12 gigabyte graphics card. And I think pound for pound in terms of price, you know, that, that I have that running some 14 B models and it only takes a few seconds for it to respond to me. Uh, so it needs a GPU. So it's going to be dual purpose there. I'm not going to build out another machine and put it over here. That's ridiculous. It's just a waste. So when I'm gaming, I turn off my uh, self-hosted Olama instance for AI. And when I'm not gaming, it stays on and it can use the graphics card as it sees fit. So this is basically all my mission critical data. And even the NAS, that's rather efficient. If you've seen some of my videos, I tend to build out all my NASs on N100s. Now, N100s at rest are like 8 watts and at full load are like 20 watts. So pretty efficient for what you're getting. Now, this VLAN is the main VLAN, the default, and it can talk to anything it wants to. But we have some limited path back from the other VLANs. And this is my Pi VLAN. This is my pride and joy. This runs 99% with the exception of AI of all my home lab applications. And I don't care what you're saying. I have Pi 5, eight gigabyte models. I have yet to find a self-hosted application that lags, that isn't responsive, that doesn't work on a Raspberry Pi. I absolutely love them. They are 2.1 watts at idle. I think at max, they're like 13 or 14 watts. So when you're talking about this replacing like all those big things and, 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 and massive servers that you're seeing from a lot of these rich creators, I just think it's completely irresponsible. It's overdone. It's overkill. It's such a waste on so many levels. So this is something I'm really proud about. That is wired back via Cat5. It has no Wi-Fi. Cat6 actually has no Wi-Fi and they actually have hats on top of them. So they are being powered by the Ethernet from this managed switch. So if you're looking at this being about $100 each, that's $400 plus the $600 over here, you're at $1,000. So everything you're being shown from these other creators, okay, I'm going to pick on Tim a little bit, Techno Tim. He recently put out one that I'm kind of picking on a little bit by not directly picking on. I love him. He's awesome. Sexy man. But he's 
pretty wasteful when it comes to energy and and the stuff he needs to do. Uh, so I think I can do 90% of what he's doing just right here on this side of things. So this just goes to show you it doesn't have to be that expensive. So just furthering on this, this VLAN discussion really quickly, the pies can talk back to this, but uh, there's a prerequisite that the, the request has to originate from the default land. So if something comes in here and it's not from the default land, my firewall rules will drop it. So that's pretty cool. So all of these things, because they are hosting my self-hosted applications, including this Exceli draw that I'm using. Um, yeah, this is just a, a rock star network. I haven't had any problems with, and it just sips and it's so quiet. I mean, I walk into most other people's home labs. It's so loud. This is in my office every day and you can barely hear it. I'm doing a video. It's on, you can't hear it. Oh, I just love it. Chef's kiss there. Now the other network is my IOT guest VLAN. This is the sketchy one. These are all like sensors and cameras. Again, I build a lot of this stuff off ESP 32s. I mean, they sip like one watt at rest, maybe like three Watts. They're three volts. Uh, and then I have a home lab over here, our home assistant over here. That is on a raspberry Pi as well. And then it has a Zigbee and a Bluetooth mesh coming off of that. Now this can only function over Wi-Fi, So it's isolated over here on those arrow devices. It can't get back here, but I do allow home assistant one machine on that network via IP via one port to report back to anything. And again, it still has that prerequisite that it needs to originate from the default land. So this home assistant really is taking in all these requests, but I'm not allowing these to get anywhere back to the network. That'll all be filtered through home assistant on one port. And again, has that prerequisite that it needs to originate from the default land. So if we look at my devices, once again, I've got the Unify Now uh, Ultra, Cloud Ultra. I've got a set of arrow, basically access points in mesh networks that are isolated and only used for IoT and guests. And then I've got over here, I've got a U6 access point, U6 Pro from Unify. And then I have my Unify 16 port, port or 16 port, POE powered uh, managed switch. All this information will be linked down below and the prices. If you wait, you can catch these on sale too or even used. I wouldn't hesitate buying a used Unify device at all if you can find them. You probably can't find them because they are just that good. Once you get them, you don't want to let them go. So hopefully this shows you, you know, just a different way about going about it and a very responsible way about going about it. Like certainly I could replace this with a bunch of Ryzen nines and a whole bunch of Ram and be serving the same exact thing that I'm serving off the raspberry Pis. I just don't understand that mentality. It's more like that machismo thing. Like I want to show up to the party in a Lamborghini. I like squeal up skirt, push my Honda civic up and steal your girl. And then you're mad. Right. But then you go back and you flex online because I've got the biggest system and look how tall my server rack is. Now I got the shorty over there, boy, doesn't even make a, a peep. So I'm encouraging guys not to be intimidated by a lot of these bigger creators that are going to show you the Lamborghinis. It's something you don't need unless you're trying to set up a mini enterprise like them, or you've got a small business that you're running and serving people that are outside your network, like hundreds of them. You don't need like what Techno Tim just showed you. You don't need that. Uh, again, not picking on Techno Tim. He's rad. Titan. Sexy man, as I said. Anyways, if this is something of value to you, please consider liking, subscribing, and make sure you hit that bell notification. I am going to talk about my beloved, oh, my beloved N100 PF Sense box. She'll go on to live another life. She will be repurposed. I don't know what I'll do with her yet. Perhaps I'll just keep her as a backup in case something does happen. But I can't speak enough about this. It was just, I, I kind of outgrew it. I know some people might take exception to that, but hey, I've got no qualms. I've gotten hours back in terms of time working on the router by simply moving over to a Unify. It is icky, not as much control, not open source, proprietary, but there's so many advantages. And I'm going to show you that in an upcoming video. So again, make sure you hit that bell button because we're going to walk through why I made that decision, walk through the ultra, walk through setting it up and walk through some of the firewall rules that I deployed and show you the Unify software because it's absolutely phenomenal. That's another thing about that router. Some of the routers that on Unify don't come with the gateway software. This one does thankfully. So I highly recommend it because otherwise you're going to be hosting it on your PC. It's just really not a good experience. So anyways, if you like this type of stuff, I really appreciate it if you like, subscribe. My name's Hill Phantom. I'll see you next time.